Today, I'd like to go over the 10 regional passes for trains in Japan that are available for travelers visiting Japan, with quick introduction of the region and sample itinerary so you can enjoy train travel in your next trip to Japan. Japan Rail Pass is a popular item for travelers coming to Japan because you can save a lot on travel cost and also you can do extensive travel by trains without any additional cost once you have the pass. JR is actually the name of the train company which was a former Japan's national railway and now it's separate to six different companies from Hokkaido in the north and Kyushu in the south. And each of them offer different regional passes so that foreign travelers can enjoy their regions when they come to Japan. And depends on your itinerary, you might be able to save more if you get regional passes instead of Japan Rail Pass. The merit of regional pass is usually they are cheaper and sometimes have access to trains that JR Pass doesn't allow. The major cons of regional pass is while Japan Rail Pass has a long pass period such as 14 days and 21 days, regional passes are maximum 7 days. Also, unlike Japan Rail Pass, regional passes don't give you the option for the green car, which is a first class. So there are pros and cons of regional passes. Keeping those in mind, today I'd like to introduce 10 regional passes that might help your trip next time. First. Let's see what kind of trains in Japan you can get on. Many JR passes allow you to get on Shinkansen in the region. Shinkansen, also called bullet train, is the fastest service in Japan and convenient when you travel between cities to cities, especially if that is a long distance. Unfortunately, there is no regional passes that you can use for Tokaido Shinkansen, which is connecting Tokyo and Kyoto the fastest. But there is a substitute pass that can be used between the two areas. Another kind of train that train pass holders can enjoy is Limited Express. These are trains either operated with reserved seats and some of them come with non-reserved seats. Limited Express trains are often used for airport transfer, train connecting intercities that doesn't have Shinkansen and to bring passengers from the major cities to resort or onsen destination. You can get either unlimited ride or up to certain times, depends on the regional pass. The third one is joyful train. Joyful trains are made specially to enjoy the slow local trip. The train has a design inspired by each region and you can enjoy local foods and sake from that area. Even just with JR East, there are this many joyful trains. There are more on JR West and Kyushu too. When you plan your trip, I recommend you to use one of the navigation apps. This Japan Travel by Navitime, you can check if the route is covered by your train passes. You can also check the route with a Google map. I searched the route like a hundred times to check the route for this video and sometimes the train and the route doesn't come up as I want it. So it might be better to check with the similar defined services. Now let's see the regional passes from the north. The first pass we take a look at is Hokkaido Rail Pass. Hokkaido is a northern island of Japan. It's known for great nature. You can enjoy the landscape, hot springs, and foods such as seafoods and daily foods. Major tourist destination includes the big city of Sapporo, which has a popular winter snow festival. There are many ski resorts, such as Niseko too. And the regional pass to enjoy the train ride in Hokkaido is Hokkaido Rail Pass, that can be used throughout Hokkaido's JR lines. The pass period is 5 days and 7 days. 5 days passes is 20,000 yen. 7 day pass is 26,000 yen, and half of that price for children. The pass can be a little cheaper if you purchase from agencies. With this Hokkaido Rail Pass, you can enjoy the unlimited ride on limited express trains. One thing to note is, usually you can receive regional passes only at the JR counters that issue the pass. For this pass, you can get at JR Hokkaido's counter in major stations in Hokkaido or Sapporo's Shinchitose Airport. 
It also has a partnership with JR East and can be purchased at some stations in Tokyo if you stay in Tokyo before. So, for reference, I made a seven days route using this Hokkaido Rail Pass. This time, let's say we fly to Sapporo and visit various locations in Hokkaido that you can access by train. On the first day, let's pick up the pass at Shinjito's airport and use it immediately on the JR line to Sapporo. On the second day, we take Soya to Wakkanai, which is the northern tip of Hokkaido. On the third day, we go to Asahikawa. Fourth day, we go to Abashiri by Hotsk. And fifth day, we go to Obihiro. And sixth day, we go to Hakodate. And the last day, we come back to Shinjito's airport. I realized that to use this pass effectively, you have to ride lots of long distance trains. Also, no scenic volcanoes or scenic fields are located right in front of the station, so you will need to rent a car or take a taxi or bus tour if you like to see them. So, this Hokkaido Rail Pass may suit your travel style. If one of your purpose of travel is riding the train itself, then what if you depart from Tokyo by Shinkansen? If you use Shinkansen and trains to and from Hokkaido, the total fare will be about 102,000 yen. It seems the new price of Japan Rail Pass will be 50,000 yen for 7 days, so if you are traveling by train from Tokyo, the JR Pass is recommended. If you are going directly to Hokkaido by plane, the Hokkaido Rail Pass is recommended. Next, let's see passes from JR East, based in Tokyo. Around Tokyo is full of sightseeing spots, and JR East offers several passes for their regions. Today, let's see the three passes that looks convenient. The first pass is the JR Tokyo Wild Pass. This pass is issued by the East Japan Railway Company and can be used on the wide range of JR lines in Tokyo, as well as some private railways. The major tourist destination that you can visit with this Tokyo Wild Pass includes Lake Kawaguchiko by Mount Fuji, Nikko, Izu, and in winter, Gala Yuzawa, that is connected to directly to the ski resort. A major feature is that you can ride limited express trains that operate directly with private railways, such as Fuji Excursion and Odoriko, which Japan Rail Pass cannot be used. With the JR Tokyo Wild Pass, you can get on and off freely, even on the local trains on Fuji Q Railway and Izuku Railway. You might hear lots of Q in train company's name in Japan. It's abbreviation of the Q Core, which means express. Also, as a special exception, it's convenient to be able to ride the limited express calls directly from Shinjuku to Tobu Nikko with this pass. You can get to Nikko by taking the Shinkansen and JR lines too, but it's more convenient if you can go directly from Tokyo. The period is 3 days and price is 10,180 yen, half price for children. Again, I made a sample itinerary to get the most of the 3 days from this JR Tokyo Wild Pass. The first one is making 3 day trips from Tokyo keeping your hotel in Tokyo as a base. First day going to Kawaguchiko, second day going to Izuku Shimoda, third day going to Karuizawa. The total price will be 32,000 yen if you don't have a pass. The second plan is a day trip to Gala Yuzawa in winter, Nikko, and take Night Express to leave Tokyo. You can make your own combination of the day trips but even if you stay one night at the destination, or use only one way like Night Express, you still can get enough of the pass. You can buy it twice if you like. One thing to note is, since this is a JR East pass, you cannot use a Tokaido Shinkansen from Tokyo to Odawara or Atami. If you want to travel a little further, how about the following two passes? JR East pass Tohoku area is a train pass that covers Tohoku region in addition to the area of Tokyo Wild Pass. Tohoku is a great place to enjoy the local foods, 
temples, and amazing hot springs. And many JRE Shinkansen s are running in this area. If you have this pass, you can ride them as much as you like for five days. The price is 20,000 yen, half price for children. So, this is sample route I made for this JR East Pass Tohoku area. The first day, let's go to Hirosaki in Aomori to see the Hirosaki Castle. On the day two, let's take a joyful train called Resort Shirakami that runs on Gono Line along the Sea of Japan. The night we stay in Akita City. On the third day, Let's take Akita Shinkansen to Tazawako Station and immerse yourself in the deep mountain hot springs of Newton Onsen, feeling the bliss of the nature. Day four, let's go down to Yamagata. Yamagata is just like other prefectures in Tohoku, known for the great rice, soba, and hot springs. The total cost of this trip is usually more than 46,000 yen for five days, but you can save a lot. Since you have a pass that is 20,000 yen. Compared to the Kansai and the West, Tohoku has fewer people, so if you like places with less people, you can enjoy the snowy mountain winter and the beautiful greenery in summer of Tohoku. Next one is the same JR East Pass, but this one you can use in Niigata and Nagano Prefecture, in addition to the area of Tokyo Wild Pass. Unlimited rides for five days. The price is 18,000 yen, half price for the children. Nagano is a highland located in the center of Honshu Island. It's mountain area, but also has some traditional scenes. Please see my Nagano video that I visit Zenkoji Temple, that it said you have to go once in a life in Japan. This sample itinerary is said to be March. When the mountains are still in deep snow and early cherry blossoms start to bloom along the coast, I visit three places in Nagano Matsumoto, Nagano City, and Nozawa Hot Springs and make one day trip to Kawazu. The total price without pass is about 33,000 yen. It's 8,000 yen more than Tokyo Wild Pass, but you can get extra days. And you can travel further to Nagano or Niigata. Both of these JR East Pass can be used in Tokyo and Naito Express, just like the JR Wide Pass, but these two passes somehow cannot be used on the Fujikyu to Kawaguchiko. There is no price difference, depends on where you purchase from, and if you have a passport with the IC chip, you can purchase them on the JR East ticket vending machines. Next is the pass. Jointly issued by JR East and JR West. Hokuriku Arch Pass is the only regional pass that covers both Tokyo and Kyoto Osaka. Hokuriku refers to the three prefectures on the Sea of Japan side Toyama, Ishikawa, and Fukui. The area that can be used with this pass is shaped like an arch. From airports in Tokyo to Tokyo City Center, And all the way to Kanazawa on the Hokuriku Shinkansen, and from there to Kansai Airport via Kyoto and Osaka. It can be used for the JR lines in Tokyo, Osaka, and Kyoto too. You can freely get on and off Shinkansen as long as it's on the route. The Tokaido Shinkansen, which directly connects the two areas, cannot be used. Apart from Tokyo and Kyoto, Of course, you can use this pass to go to Hokuriku area, such as Kanazawa. The pass period is 7 days, and the price is 24,500 yen from agency and 1,000 yen more from official website. You can pick it up at either JR East or JR West counters. I made a sample itinerary so that I can get the most of it, but still realistic to see the enough of Kansai area. Before heading back to Tokyo. So, on the first day, you arrive at Naito Airport and go directly to Nagano. On the second day, let's take the Shinkansen to Kanazawa. Third day, let's go to Kyoto. On the fourth day, let's stay in Kyoto. And fifth day, let's go to Osaka via Nara. 
six days stay in Osaka city and on the last day come back to Tokyo. The total of this route would be around 48,000 yen. The pass is 24,500 yen, so it's a big savings. This Hokuriku Arch Pass may be more suitable if you want to stop by Kanazawa or Nagano. This route via Hokuriku takes more than 5 hours between Osaka and Tokyo, which Tokaido Shinkansen takes 2 1/2 hours only. On this route, the JR Pass, which allows you to use the Tokaido Shinkansen, h a v e more advantage. But after the price increase, the Hokurik Arch Pass stands out. Now that the topic has moved to Kansai, let's take a look at the pass we can use in Kansai region. Kansai is full of tourist destinations, deep tradition of Kyoto and Nara, and vivid city of Osaka. Let's see the pass that we can use to get around this Kansai region. And that is Kansai Through Pass. Only this pass is not a pass by JR, it's a pass by a private railway s in Kansai. Kansai has been known as the kingdom of the private railways, with a diverse lineup of private railways such as Kintetsu, Keihan, and Hankyu. You can go from Osaka to Kyoto, Nara, Koyasan, Himeji Castle only by private railways without using JR lines. Kansai Tsuru Pass. Covers almost all private railways and cable cars except for JR. It even covers the Kyoto City Pass. You can choose from two days or three days pass, and the great point is it doesn't have to be consecutive days. The price is 4,480 yen for two days pass and 5,600 yen for the three days pass. Purchase or pickup can be made at the tourist information center in the area. JR West also has a pass in the Kansai area that is the same price, but when it comes to the Kansai region, I feel this Kansai through pass has a d v a n t a g e Kansai has a lot to see and it's not a place that you can visit everything in two to three days, but let's say I'm staying near Osaka station and going around the region in three days. On the first day, I'd like to go to Koyasan, which is a Buddhism town on the mountain. On the second day, go to Nara, and the third day, let's get around Kyoto. The total cost would be about 6,600 yen without the pass. Kansai through pass is 5,600 yen, so we saved about 1,000 yen. But I'm sure you can actually save a lot more if you use buses. The only con is you need additional price when you use reserved seats. I know it's asking you too much to subscribe, so I appreciate if you could hit the like button. Next, let's go back to JR. Let's see three passes by JR West. JR West offers 10 different passes from one day pass in Osaka area to seven day pass that you can use in the four JR West area. So you can check which is the best pass for you, covering all the area you like to visit. I picked three of them today that seems convenient for your travel. Let's go over quickly. The first one is Kansai Wild Area Pass. It's 10,000 yen, five days. This is the west version of the JR Tokyo Wild Pass, and price is also similar in 10,000 yen. But it's available for five days, and for reserved seats, you can use up to six times. So I made a plan. Going to one night trip to Katsura in Wakayama and going to Amano Hashirate and Tottori in Sea of Japan side. The last day, come back to Osaka after seeing Himeji Castle. You could have saved a lot with Kansai Wild Area Pass. Next one is Kansai Hiroshima Area Pass. This pass is 15,000 yen for five days. So, with 5,000 yen more, this pass allows you to go to Hiroshima. In addition to the Kansai Wild Area Pass, it's five days pass and you can still use reserved car only up to six times. For this pass, I made an easy plan that you can take time in Hiroshima. Probably this is realistic and less tiring. But even with this itinerary, you can save enough by the Kansai Hiroshima Area Pass. 
This is a Matsue Castle located in the Shimane Prefecture, which is in Sanin region. The pass that covers this area is Sanyo Sanin Area Pass. This pass is covering even further from Hiroshima area. Sanyo, which means sunny mountain, refers to the mainly Hiroshima and Okayama, and Sanin, which means mountain shade, refers to mainly Shimane and Tottori in Sea of Japan side. It's 20,000 yen for seven days. It's 5,000 yen more than the Kansai Hiroshima area pass, but it adds two days more for the pass and unlimited ride for the reserved seats. In case you'd like to explore more of the West Japan, this Sanyo Sanyi area pass is recommended. This pass even gives you access to the Hakata in Kyushu by Sanyo Shinkansen, which is operated by JR West. So this is a sample plan I made for this Sanyo Sanyi area pass. On the first day, we go to Okayama after seeing Himeji Castle. On the second day, let's take the limited express train called Yakumo to Matsue. In the third day, we don't move much and go to Izumo Shrine. Fourth day, let's go to the west edge of the Honshu Island, Shimonoseki. In the fifth day, let's go to Hakata. Here, Please be careful to take the Shinkansen from Shin Shimonoseki and you cannot take the local train to Kyushu side because that is operated by JR Kyushu and not covered by the, this JR West Pass. Day 6, let's go to Hiroshima and the last day, let's go back to Osaka. This route sounds very tempting to me. The total train fares about 50,000 yen without a pass, so you can save a lot with a pass of 20,000 yen. The last is the old Kyushu Pass sold by JR Kyushu. Kyushu is one of the four major islands of Japan in the west. It has seven prefectures with major cities such as Fukuoka and Nagasaki. Kyushu has many active volcanoes such as Mount Aso and Sakurajima, which still emit volcanic smoke frequently. It gives the island not only the dynamic scenery, also lots of hot springs, such as Beppu. Kyushu also has beautiful scenery of coastlines with numerous islands, such as Kujukushima and Amakusa. This old Kyushu Pass has 3 days, 5 days, and 7 days, and the current price is 17,000 yen, 18,500 yen, and 20,000 yen. Children and fairs are half price. One thing to know is the pass can only be picked up in Kyushu. Also, it's possible to reserve a seat online in advance, but it costs a thousand yen as additional charge, which I haven't seen in other JR companies. Again, I made a sample route to go around Kyushu in seven days and get the most of the pass. When you don't know how to start and cannot decide the route, it's a good idea to decide places and trains you cannot miss first. For me, that is Nagasaki and a train called Yufuin no Mori. So I take Yufuin no Mori first to Yufuin, stay on the hot spring town, and next day I go to Beppu and take a train called Asoboi. The name is coming from two things, Mount Aso, and Asobo means Let's play in Japanese. Next day, let's head to Ibuski, a popular hot spring area, and go back to Fukuoka via Miyazaki. On the day 6, let's go to Nagasaki via Sasebo. Probably, we can see the beautiful sunset from the train going along the Omura Bay. The total train fare is 52,000 yen without a pass. You save a lot with the Kyushu's regional pass. All of these routes are the sample that I made, and price information may change depends on the how you purchase it, or change after I make this video. So please check the latest information when you plan your trip. So that are the 10 regional passes I picked across Japan. I hope you could get some snapshot of the regional passes and how to plan train travel in Japan. Please let me know if you have better itinerary plan 
or experience of some epic journey by train passes in Japan. Thank you for watching. Have a great trip to Japan. Have a great week. Until the next video.